Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The game is Clockwork Empires. My name is Alfred. Uh, I'm now looking at the Alpha 44 release to the stable branch. Um, I've just got an overseer's arrive. I've just got a new overseer. Okay, ignore that. Uh, so this is a session of a game. I've been playing uh, a little bit, a couple of hours at this point. Um, what I intend to do, I'm just going to talk over all the new stuff in this episode, and then going forward from episode two, um, I'll start a new game, and that can be the regular sort of let's play for uh, a couple of episodes, so you can get a feel for where the game is at. However, for this one, I figured it would be uh, a lot easier for me to just go over the list of interesting stuff, rather than try to talk and develop a colony at the same time, because that never works out... Uh, that's bad for both me and the colony. So, new stuff. Oh, I guess I should... Okay, before I get to the new stuff. Clockwork Empires is a colony builder survival game. Um, it's, got a uh, it's got a lot of dwarf fortress in its heritage. Uh, it's comparable to games like RimWorld and Prison Architect. Uh, some thematic similarities to games like Banished. Uh, so all of those things. It's uh, right up that ill-defined alley and uh in the game you are ta you are the colonial administrator for a new colony it's your job to build up this colony from scratch so when you start the game it'll look something like this there'll be no buildings just a bunch of people and you direct them to build stuff and collect stuff and defend the colony from fish people attacks and uh people are murdered and chopped into meat and bandits attack you uh i'm not going to accept this one into the colony oh look hostile fish people but my colony has been defended by my soldiers, and what am I going to do with you? Let's just dump his corpse outside of the town limit so it doesn't upset my colonists. As I was saying, new stuff. So this is the Alpha 44 release, released the Wednesday just past, two days ago, uh, to the stable version. Now, the game is in early access and in alpha. So everything here is subject to change. There are numerous balance tweaks going on all the time. Uh, mechanically, bugs are always being reported and sorted out. And fish people are attacking again. Oh, no, just being dumped outside of town. So, uh, stuff that is new to this revision. Well, first of all, uh, the most significant one... Uh, I would personally consider the most significant one is the way farms work now. Farms, as you can see, now have work crews assigned directly to them, the way you would assign a crew to uh, any other workshop, like here, the metalworks, right? I have to assign a crew, and then the crew uh, is selected from the work crew menu here, and they work in there, and that, that's their job. And something's eating my crops. There's a beetle eating the flax. Okay, I'm gonna, I promise I'm going ignore, to gonna ignore this stuff. So, a crew now must be assigned to a field, and they will work that field as farmers. So in this case, Fidelia Woods team. Now, you can still assign filters the way you would assign them to any other work crew, but you'll notice the farm filter button, so the farm enable or disable, has been removed. Um, and that's because, as farmers, that's what they do. And no one else will farm a field. Now, crews can be assigned to multiple plots, but they will only tend to them uh, as much as time and effort allow. So this is a big field of corn, and if Fidelia Woods team, Fidelia Woods team will only uh, tend to the flax field when the corn field allows them to, which means uh, every single potential uh, planting for corn is growing and tended to. And when there is nothing to do in the cornfield, then they will tend to the flax field, which means, in practice, if you've got a big field, uh, no one's going to tend to the little field. If you've got two little fields, maybe one crew can handle two little fields. So, for that reason, I've got a different work crew assigned to the flax field here, Caesar Brazenly. Uh, so that's a little tweak to the farming system, which is very important as the basis of the game, uh, because you, you have to keep everyone fed and you have to keep them alive. And that forms basis of everything else. Uh, another relatively minor change to the way crops work is that the stats for pumpkins have been changed. 
The growth rate in labor and yield for pumpkins used to be identical to corn, maize. It used to be uh, medium labor, medium crop yield, medium growth rate, uh, the way maize is now, but that's been changed to low, medium, and low, respectively. So they fill different slots in the development of your colony. Now, given the way the farming, um, farming assignments work, together with the changes in the crop characteristics, I haven't really figured out what this means for the game long term. Like, I don't know what's more efficient long term, and, and it could be that the crops are situational. Cabbage is good for... Oh, and they've added these informative little uh, tooltips, telling you what a high growth like a high growth rate crop means, for instance. Cabbage is really good for filling in holes in your food chain when you just need a crop fast. But for for uh, less labor and higher or comparable yields, for instance, corn is more efficient than cabbage in the long term. Pumpkin uh, doesn't need to be tended as often and has the same yield as corn, but it grows more slowly. So depending on what state your colony is in and the availability of your labor force, um, that can influence your choice of crops. Certain crops will be optimal for certain conditions. And um, there's a bandit camp nearby. Yep, no problem. So, um, first and foremost, those were the crop changes. Now, uh, see this pinkish basket over here? This is a bushel of fish person organs. And that's a new thing that a naturalist, it's pretty gross. It's a new thing that a naturalist can do. So naturalists, in addition to wandering around and like uh, exploring mineral nodes, right? A naturalist can explore this node and tell me what building a mine there would produce. I actually have a mine in production here because a naturalist revealed to me that building a mine here will produce clay. So that's one thing a natural. That's the original thing naturalists were able to do, and now they can also dissect the bodies of slain fish people and obelescians. Uh, I don't have a... Oh, there we go. Dissect fish people. I don't believe anyone can actually do that because I don't actually have a naturalist. The last naturalist I had was a, a loner from the uh, from the Empire. So you can dissect them. You can... Oh, what is this? Troops are massing. Oh, that that's not good. Well, uh, let, me, let me get through the change log. So... Um, you can dissect you can dissect fish people for their guts, uh, for an eldritch knowledge, and prestigious scientific discovery, and I mean that literally because you will get a prestige point for doing that stuff. And also, you might it might yield up a bushel of fish person organs, which is different from the raw fish person steak, which you also get from di chopping up fish people. Uh, I don't think this can actually be cooked yet. It's um, it's just one of those starvation foods. People will eat it if they're like on the brink of starvation. Uh, yeah, okay, so naturalists. Uh, all right, there's been tweaks to the corpse retrieval system. So the way it worked, when a friendly corpse died, uh, a, cr a bury corpse job was, generally speaking, automatically generated. Your colonists would go and try to retrieve the body and bury it, provided you had built a, uh, a cemetery. This created problems when your colonists were killed in far distant locations, often by, say, bandits. Because your colonists from town would march all the way out to retrieve the corpse, and they would be killed by the thing that killed the corpse. Thus creating another corpse, and thus tying up another colonist trying to... It was, it was the corpse burial conga. That's been... It's been it's seen several tweaks. I think it, it has seen one... Hopefully this last tweak is now... Uh, is now the last one that will be needed. Basically, when a corpse dies now, it checks the surrounding area for hostile entities before it creates a corpse burial job. So no one will try to retrieve a corpse if it's still surrounded by bandits. If, if the coast is clear, then it will automatically create a buried corpse job. Now, as the patch notes mentioned, uh, this is still a problem if whatever the hostile thing like left the area and then later returns. But... Well, that's reasonable, right? So, uh, that's a tweak to the corp system. There have been to, uh, additional tweaks to the kitchen. Uh, speaking of cooking changes. So here's a cooking workshop. We'll see up here in the uh, upper left that there's now a cook basic food button, which combines 
several different types of food. So we can see the illustration, there was like a picture of cabbage stew and the uh, general stew and then steak, etc., etc. Uh, basically, a lot of those basic foods have been combined into a single cook basic food button, which uh, you can see here, I've got just got, I've told the kitchen to build or maintain a level of 10 food at all times. So it's simplified the kitchen uh, production chain a little bit. You still, it's still broken down into, it's still pretty granular. And some of the things that don't uh, fit into basic food are still broken down into individual items, like the various funguses and the berries. There's also a brew basic drink button. So when you have this queued up, and uh, you can see I've told the colony to always maintain a minimum of three drinks, it will turn corn into chicha, and it'll turn wheat into beer. Uh, and for that, all you need is the vat, the brewing vat. For the second tier of alcoholic beverages, which is uh, wine and rum, or not, not wine, whiskey and rum, you will still need the more advanced uh, brewing modules. Here, let me pull it up for you here. Right, the mechanical brewing tank and the still. Now, the perceptive among you will notice that all the modules of the brewery have been combined with the kitchen. That's because the kitchen can now function as kitchen and brewery. Uh, practically speaking, what this means for the early game is that you can produce beer very, very early because all you need to produce beer is the or beer and chicha is a couple of planks for the wooden brewing vat, which you can build almost immediately. Whereas previously, when the brewery was a separate building, it actually you needed bricks and I think stone and other stuff to build it. So you wouldn't build the brewery until later in the game. Um, that that said, the kitchen staff is now responsible for cooking your food and brewing your booze, which means they'll be super busy at all times. Um, it, it remains to be seen what combining those two buildings means. If you really don't like the combination of those functions, you can, of course, just build a second kitchen and put you know, only ovens in kitchen number one and only brewery modules in the second kitchen. And you still have two separate, um, you still have two separate work crews. And so those functions can still be segregated if you like. Uh, but not, they don't have to be. Okay, uh, what else is there? Um, there's a new colonist immigration event, and, uh, oh, someone's been, well, the colonists have taken care of the marauding beetles, someone has had a dream about mysterious lights in the forest, Shiloh Snuffbox uh, wants me to be friends with the fish people instead of being hostile, I say continue to shoot on sight. So, uh, there's a new commoner in immigration event. One of the complaints lately has been that uh, commoners didn't seem to arrive as frequently as they used to, whereas overseers seem to arrive all the time, which led to people having a ton of overseers and not enough workers in their work crews. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to, like, they happen spontaneously, so I'm not going to be able to pull one up on demand. But now immigrants arrive as part of a randomly generated event, or I think it's tied to production, the way overseer immigration is also tied to production but it's procedural. Um, there's an event right here. I'll just take food, right? So two immigrants have arrived. I can just say, give me two immigrants. I can say, screw you, go away and not accept them. Or I can spend three prestige to search for additional immigrants as part of this, uh, whoops, uh, part of this event. I'm just gonna say, okay, get, you know, here's two new immigrants, get to work. Landmines from the immigrant. I oh, this is a new event. The ministry has sent me landmines, like the gift of landmines, because they heard about the Mecca Republican, the imminent Mecca Republican invasion. Thank you. I guess I now have landmines in my inventory, and both the landmines and the immigrants should show up near the airship mast here. Even though the flavor text of the immig the lower class immigration says they like wandered in from the woods. There's another new event. Uh, once your colony reaches a certain size, they will actually demand that you build a chapel for them. I mean, it's, it's a you know, sternly worded letter. And you can, you know, you can tell them to screw off, you can agree, or you can promise a chapel. And uh, much like the fish person uh, colonist, the demands fish person, what am I trying to say here? Much like the colonist response to uh, their demands that you change your policy with regards to fish people, the uh, 
the attitudes and emotional states of the colonists will, you know, they can be affected by your decision to not build a chapel or build a chapel or whatever. That's another way you can influence the morale of the colony. Uh, what else is there? Uh, we've already talked about farms. Okay, new buildings. New buildings as of Alpha 44. So a couple of new buildings were introduced in the interim between 43 and 44. They were actually introduced in the introduced to the experimental branch, uh, but now they're in the game proper. So new to Alpha 44 is the public house, the pub, which I will show you. I don't know that I'll be able to. Well, I okay. I'm not going to build one right here. I'll just show you the button here. The public house is a place for colonists to drink, and what it is, it's it's a uh, it's an office type building. And in game terminology, an office is a building that does not uh, does not take in commodities to produce anything. It provides a service. So the pub. It's a big building and you can put in chairs and things, but most importantly, you put in a giant vat where all the colony's booze goes. If you don't build the big booze vat, the bottles of beer and stuff just go in the stockpile and people will drink it from there. But if you have built a pub and then it gets staffed with the publican, I guess, and or uh, workers there, and they will serve booze to your colonists. Hopefully I can get to that maybe in my playthrough in subsequent episodes. Another new building. Is the barbershop. The barbershop can now, um, back in the uh, 1800s and 1900s, barbers and barbers played the role of surgeons. Actually, the actual historical reference might be from a little bit further back from that, but anyway, the barbershop is now a place where your colonists can go to have their ailments treated. So the way wounds work in this game is that. Uh, Colonists who take wounds, they, it will become a permanent ailment, which affects their morale, which affects their uh, ability to work. Uh, oh, I'm not. I'm sorry. Not ailments. Afflictions, and they go in this. Uh, you'll see the affliction row here. So as he accumulates wounds, they'll pile up there, and if he gets enough afflictions, he'll die. If he has, say, a couple of afflictions, that will affect his bravery, and he will tend to run away from fights and cower in fear and stuff instead of working. It's not good for anyone. So the barbershop it now, uh, is now a place where columns can go to be healed. Again, it has to be staffed by someone. Uh, and both of these buildings are actually open in the evenings and closed in the early mornings because that's when most colonists are available to visit them. Um, so also similar to the chapel. Because most colonists have their regular work day, they're not available to go visit the chapel, pub, or barbershop but they are free at the end of the day because their jobs will end and they'll come back into town to eat and sleep. And so that's when the barbershop, chapel, and pub will tend to be open uh, to provide the services. Uh, which is pretty cool, actually. I, I think uh, for a long time, there's no way to heal colonists. So uh, there you go. Um, another minor tweak to the food system is that food now completely resets hunger. Uh, that is, cooked food completely resets hunger, whereas raw food will only temporarily uh, relieve hunger. Colonists who are hungry, they'll eat. And if they're very hungry, they will eat raw food. If they're only a little bit hungry, they will prefer cooked food. Uh, it's just a little minor tweak. And the problem there was that um, if it took a while to build your kitchen, your entire colony would start to go hungry and then they would eat raw food out of the fields, which would only temporarily assuage their hunger, which means um, they would continue eating raw food, which meant nothing was getting cooked in the kitchen, which meant it was very difficult to climb out of the hunger hole. So, um, the change to the cooked food system has, uh, fixes that a little bit. Um, another little thing. Sleep time has been reduced 25%, so colonists sleep one quarter less than they used to. Um, that's just because it was really boring watching your entire colony sleep. Uh, so they, they need less sleep. And they're more active in the, I guess, the evenings and the early mornings. Colonists also wake up more easily from things like destruction, uh, gunshots, uh, your your various stocks and crops and things. Oh, I have allied troops arriving, which is good because oh, they're very far away. 
oh, allies from the Stalmark have arrived to defend my colony. This is awesome. Uh, that is cool. I've got a fish man somewhere running around in town. I'm still waiting for that uh, invasion from the Republic, but hopefully it's not too bad. Another little tweak. Corpses. So the way it used to be, when there was a corpse of any description, uh, it would become a location where those little beetles, you know those little beetles we stomped, we saw stomped earlier near the flax fields? Uh, corpses would generate vermin, right? So if you had a corpse somewhere, it just beetles would just come out of it on a regular basis to come and eat your crops, which is problematic for a couple of reasons. Uh, there is now a limited, corpses will now only generate a limited number of beetles, uh, which is which is better for uh, crop purposes. And um, last but certainly not least, the corner bug has been fixed. It was actually pat, it was actually fixed in one of the 43 experimental builds, but again, now that it's in Alpha 44, it is properly fixed into the game. As we can see here, putting modules in the corners of buildings no longer causes the roof uh, the roof generation to break. You can see these buildings now all have proper walls and uh, roofs, even though I've put modules in the corners. That was a purely cosmetic bug, but like every new player would encounter it and everyone would always be asking, what's, what's going on? Why doesn't my blacksmith have a roof? So that's finally been fixed. Uh, yeah, whew. okay, so though that's a short digest of personally what I personally think are the standouts from the uh, change log and patch notes to Alpha 44. Yeah, from this point forward, again, subsequent episodes will be me starting a new colony and just playing through that. Uh, but that's, by and large, the new stuff for Alpha 44. Also, there are, of course, there have been a swath of bug fixes and stability fixes and things like that. Oh, I'm being visited by... Soldiers are just hanging around. Uh, yeah. So, the game is Clockwork Empires. My name is Alfred. I do these uh, bunch of episodes, basically monthly, every time there's a new release to the stable branch of Clockwork Empires. So it's available on Steam. Uh, it's in early access. It's not done. Um, you know, it's not feature complete. Uh, stuff is being added and balanced and bug fixed all the time. Uh, there's an official forums, there's an official wiki, uh, community is fairly active. So this is the sort of game you think would interest you. I encourage you to uh, visit visit the uh, website, uh, Gaslamp Games, and check it out. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching this, and have a good one.